giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Our 25th ranked team through um, week four of the competition is going to be team number 133. Is that Christine or Justin? I'm not sure. That's me. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry. So from okay. Standish, Maine um, and Bonnie Eagle High School, it's Bert with an overall record of 29, 10, and 1. They were finalists at the Rhode Island. New Hampshire district last weekend where they seeded first um they faced a strong season pool of teams in rhode island this past weekend and they capped in the number four seed alliance selecting 173 and 51 12 um and they took the finals to three matches but fell short to the number one alliance who was really really strong um they're currently fifth in new england as they head into the new england district championship and good luck to them they've had a pretty great season so far so as somebody in district, Christine, I have a question for you. So mm -hmm. like in, in, um, in the blue lines, when you check their, when you check their ranking and it's like third, like that or fourth, but it says not like the check mark isn't there for qualified. That's like pretty much qualified though. Right. If they have yeah. Like, I mean, if okay. you're that high up, um, yeah, there's no you're way good. you're not. Okay. The, the only thing like they're the teams that haven't played their second event yet. Um, that is oh, why a lot of teams don't have that check mark next to them, even though they're that high up. So unless you've won, um, chairman's or i believe rookie all-star uh you're not going to um be qualified at this point so cool. cool yeah all right awesome yeah thanks for that clarification for those not in districts or in the <laughs> or the new york regional district <laughs> new york regional district system yeah it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> that's funny cool all right so moving on uh to the 24th ranked team is team number 176 from windsor locks and Suff suffield connecticut and connecticut 4-h foundation it's aces high blast from the past with an overall record of 31 and 5 they were the winners of the western new england district event so coming out strong earlier this season they took the number one seed but would end up losing in the finals at the waterbury event uh, but this past weekend at the western new england district event they would do the same taking the number one spot um, after 12 matches with a 2.91 ranking score average selecting the cyber knights who we may talk about later and 63 28 um, they would take the district win in six matches um so this alliance scored within 11 points of each other in all six matches so they were really consistent like their their scores really never varied between 11 points which i thought was really interesting so they're currently fourth in new england um as they head into the new england district championship coming up so um congrats and good luck to them um so i don't know if christine you've had any exposure to to 176 um yeah a little bit season. um i I've definitely seen some like match video, obviously, and it's been really great to see them make such a strong comeback back in the day mm -hmm. when I was like a super fan in elementary school. Um, they were like one of those powerhouse teams. And I think yep. that now that they're getting a lot of um, like younger mentors that are working at UTC and local tech companies coming back and mentoring them, oh, cool. you're definitely starting to see them ramp back up again. So I'm excited to see how else they do this season. They had a great season then last year, and I'm sure they're oh, going to just continue it this season yeah, yeah and that's why i like oh go ahead tyler i was just saying 2017 you look at just the transition christine i think you nailed on the head there between 2017 and 2018 uh you know a tremendous improvement uh they mm -hmm. didn't even qualify for district champs in 2017 i don't think they got out of the quarterfinals in 2018 uh, you know, taking a district win, going to the semis at champs, and now, uh, you know, here in 2019, continuing success and looking even better and better. It's it's cool to hear about 176 again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's it, when Justin and I were, yeah, we heard it all, like I feel like I heard a lot about Aces High, and just yeah. remember like they had a like an iron on print, I think, on like a denim shirt or denim jacket or something of like an ace on the back, but mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I remember them. But cool, nice. All right, so moving on to our 23rd ranked team. That's going to be team number 4775. From Mexico City, Mexico, it's Aztec Robotics, 34, 15 and 0 in official play this season, and we're the winners of the Cuidad de Mexico and Laguna Regionals. So I learned that there were at least three regionals in Mexico this year. Was there more than mm -hmm. that? Or was well, there exactly last three? year there was supposed to be three, but then the earthquake happened. Oh, that's right. Oh, wow. That caused one in Mexico City to not happen, which might have been this one. I don't remember. Um, gotcha. But yeah, so that's you know great to see Mexico up to up to three again. Hopefully, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, that's hopefully awesome. like China can do the same after their events get canceled. For sure. Um, so yeah, three regionals in Mexico this year, and Aztec Robotics has won two of them. Mm -hmm. After a quarterfinal exit at their first event, uh, which was the Monterey Regional, they won their last two events out of the second and third alliances. That's so awesome. 
Uh, yeah, even outside the top alliance has been great. So they really excel in scoring car at scoring cargo, which in, in elimination rounds, at least right now in this game, that uh, seems to be what it counts. So a great regional campaign for them, and they're headed to South Champs. So good luck to Aztec Robotics, 4775. Look at the camera work on this event. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. Like, oh, so, yeah, that's It's awesome. so weird because the regional, like, uh, a week ago before that was just awful. And then this one comes in, and it's like, some of the most professional cam work I've ever Yeah, it's seen. pretty good. Yeah. It, it, it like, I mean, yeah, it, it keeps jumping scenes over and over, but from a, just a spectator, like, that's, is that like a wire cam there they have or something? Or yeah. 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 Good stuff from Mexico. It's really cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And they seem to have operators that at least maybe somewhat understand the game because they seem to catch <laughs> the, they said catch the important stuff. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a regional event where they're just like, oh, dead robot just sitting there, light flashing and the camera's on. <laughs> that's and right. Like, you're like what's happening right now? <laughs> There's not five of the robots opening right, around. You're right. These camera transitions are fantastic. Actually, yeah, it's surprising. yeah, it's pretty cool. By the way, Shelby A, thank you for a thousand biddies. Appreciate oh, that. Thanks for supporting. Thank fun. Biddies? Oh, I never heard that before. Uh, I think I got that from Libby. So <laughs> it's so thousand don't blame her. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna keep it moving here in the top twenty-five, and in the twenty-second spot. We have team 2075 from Grand Rapids, Michigan and West Catholic High School. It's Enigma Robotics. They have an overall record of 18 and one. And they were the winners of the Alpena Alpena number one district event. Um, PJ will probably uh, get us straight with that. <laughs> um, Alpina. So a team had, <laughs> Alpena. OK, so a team who had to wait a long kind of a long while in, in terms of most teams to play their first matches of Destination Deep Space. Um, and they definitely turned some heads when they played this past weekend. Went 12 and 0 during qualification matches with a Miss Daisy ranking score average. That's 3.41. Um, they Respect. would <laughs> <laughs> they would lose a finals match one by only three points, uh, but then win the next two by about 10 points each. But a really great start to the season for uh, Enigma Robotics. I think it's their first time on the top 25. Um, but they'll be playing again at the four sales event coming up and then on to the Michigan State Championship. So uh, welcome to top 25 for them here at 22 in week four. Uh, just an awesome robot from them. And um, congratulations on a great start and good luck uh, going the rest of the way. So, yeah, it does seem like a little bit late in the season to still be talking about teams playing their first event. Yeah, that's not what the I mean. yeah, first they're not district, the only ones. especially. No. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Exactly. Especially district. Yeah. So yeah, there's a couple kinda, more teams that are in the same. Yeah. Role. I mean, that could be a really interesting conversation itself. Like. You know, especially teams that have a practice robot and stuff. Um, I know there's some unbag time and everything anyways, but um, kind of just seeing how this game is played, kind of sitting back a little bit, and then, um, you know, then going forward from there. But. Well, it'll be really interesting next year without bag day if that it becomes even more of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, Ooh. I really wonder if it'll <laughs> yeah, it'd be hard to get people to sign up. For Maybe those. a topic for another night. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're in the old top twenty-five. Hey, let's just yeah. talk about that let's for just talk about minutes. this for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Tangent. What That's time right. is it, Mike? Eleven thirty. All right, let's wrap <laughs> it up. <laughs> All right, we'll wrap <laughs> for sure. Oh man. All right, so uh, moving on to, uh, I think one of Tyler's favorite teams. Um, absolutely one of Tyler's favorite teams. <laughs> absolutely. In our twenty-first spot. That's going to be team number twenty-four. E one. Tremont, Illinois, Tremont High School. It's the Roboteers, 13 and 5 overall, or the winners, the Central Illinois Regional. So Roboteers are always a top 25 mainstay, and they make their first appearance here week four. They were not perfect out of the gate, but they got better and better each match, eventually earning an invite to the number one alliance. This robot might have the most degrees of freedom in any I've seen. We talked about that, guys, on Premier Night. We saw them with a swerve drive, uh, an elevator, and some uh, powered actuation or some actuated yeah. compliance mechanism as well so uh it's really kind of a, a crazy robot but they use it well the swerve does a great job getting them around defense and the actuated compliance scoring mechanism really uh does a good job in those tight spaces getting the hatch and the cargo where it needs to go so another awesome machine for the robots here they made it work for another win and they take the field again week six at seven rivers so good luck to team 2481 so something yeah tyler what do you got to say man well okay, <laughs> so couple, couple these are your boys I mean, people know i'm a big fan of 2041 yeah. right and uh you know this year i i was a little worried uh 2041 has won the central illinois regional every single year it's been around since 2014 right uh so that's that's now maths six six years in a row now right um, so, or six, yeah, six years, six competitions in a row, right? Um, so I actually thought this might've been the year they were going to lose, uh, 2041, you know, I, I watched them on webcast on Friday a little bit. They ended up having a four RP match, um, but they still had a lot of issues. Uh, they, they completely, uh, essentially rebuilt their robot from the ground up. Uh, I was talking to some team members, uh, on there and Thursday came in and it was completely disassembled down to the, uh, 
uh, swear pods. Like it wow. was a full wow. rebuild. Uh, they didn't even have their, they didn't even make their first two call matches. Uh, they didn't have their, uh, 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 cargo manipulator on until I think later Friday, if I remember correctly. Uh, so a lot of, uh, you know, Thanks. late stuff coming on from them. And it's really, really interesting the the C for that, uh, their kind of evolutions, they kind of kept getting better and better, but then they, you know, they kind of stumbled a little bit between. I have to admit, I was a little surprised that Argos, uh, actually picked them. I actually thought there was a chance they weren't going to. And I think it kind of came down to that, uh, it's, it's a team you'd rather be with than be against. Uh, you know, Roboteers is a very smart team. Their drive coach is extremely smart. The strategy coach is really smart, and they can they can help outlay plans. I, don't, I think it's a team you almost don't want to just play against in that situation, right? And to me, uh, I think Roboteers have a very, very high upside. I don't think they're even close to being there yet. So I'm, I'm hmm. uh, once they get there, I, I think they can be a very – uh, top tier team. I think they're a tier below that right now, um, but I think there's a lot of potential to their robot moving forward. I, I, until you just said that, I can't believe that they missed their first two qual matches. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? They yeah. must have really just been like going ham on that robot. That's that's nuts. And I mean, that's what we kind of and just kind of go full circle with with um, Premier Night. Like that's why we take all all of this with a grain of salt, right? Like yeah. you know, it you're you're seeing the best of the best that the robot has done in a controlled environment, you know? So that's why like, we always you know, take this over the grain of salt, but it's really like really interesting. And thanks for that Tyler to kind of just get some inside info on, you know, a lot of great teams do stuff like this. You know, it's not just teams that show up without a robot. It seems that really, you know, are good teams that sometimes need to kind of start, start over again. So yeah, I think that's really interesting Tyler. You know, they have a, they have a really big upside. So absolutely. Yeah. Great, great team still. Absolutely. And their, oh, yeah. and their teammates Argos as well too are absolutely fantastic. I thought they made a, yeah. a great, great alliance together. And, uh, uh, if you didn't see, I interviewed, uh, it's up on our YouTube now. I interviewed the, uh, captain of, uh, Argos, uh, that was in the field and was talking about some of their strategies. Cause in finals Argos arm did not function, did not work. And they had to completely change up strategy. So it was really cool to see that alliance change it up and still get it done. Awesome. Well, All right, so we'll move on uh, in the top 25. And in the 20th spot, we have Team 2046. From Maple Valley, Washington, and Tahoma Senior High School, it's Bear Metal. They have an overall record of 31-3, and three, and they were the winners. And the District Chairman's Award winners this past weekend at the West Valley District event. So double gold cling bling emotes in the chat for Bear Metal. Um, so they came out strong at their first event earlier this month, taking the number one seed with a 3.08 ranking score average. But unfortunately... Um, they needed to be subbed out in the semifinals of the Auburn Mountain View event, and their just alliance couldn't uh, pull out the victory from there. So this past weekend, 2046 would go 10 and two and take the number one seat again. This time with slightly lower, but a 2.83 ranking score average. They took down eight, four, and three, and they would take the Blue Banner home, only to get a second one a short time later with the District Chairman's Award, as I said. So congrats on the Kling Bling to Bear Metal. Uh, they have qualified for district championship and they're currently sitting fifth in the Pacific Northwest. So another great season from bare metal, um, exciting weekend for them, um, with bringing home the, the double gold, always, uh, it's always exciting, a lot of fun for sure. So congrats to them. Yeah. More and more teams from the PNW, uh, step it up and you see their, uh, ELO scores, uh, at seven for this week. Um, we didn't really explain that too much of that, but actually if somebody in chat could link me. Uh, with a description of ELO, I'd like to put that in as a bot command. So if somebody doesn't mind doing that, just uh, tag me and we'll have that. And uh, so when people are curious what ELO is, we can uh, just do that and we can explain it to them. Awesome. <laughs> Love Justin's phonetic spelling. All right. So moving uh, on to our 90th ranked team. It's going to be team number 364. That's what happens when you get roasted by the chat for the first five <laughs> years doing the show. <laughs> From Gulfport, Mississippi, Gulfport High School, it's Team Fusion, 29-2 and two overall, and with the winners, the Rocket City and Bayou Regionals. So if you're going 15-1 and one at their first event, I don't remember. Did they make the top 25 at the, after their first event? I, I uh, no, know. I don't think so. I don't think so, no. So I think they got a little... Uh, a little um, snubbed. They got robbed a little bit there. <laughs> uh, 15 and one is is uh, certainly impressive. So uh, all eyes in that region certainly were, were focused on 364 heading into the Bayou this weekend to see if they could keep up that toward pace. And they proved that they certainly could, earning the number one seed going eight and one, earning 25 ranking points. They selected the number two seed, 1421, and added a 3991 to take the regional win. So two for two for them as their attention shifts to the championship in Houston. Good luck to 364 Team Fusion. Team Fusion. Yeah, you know, I think it, that was that could be a snub. And I know it looks like yeah. we have somebody from the chat in here. And you know, I really the, feel like 
go ahead, Tyler. I was going to say, just the interesting thing is that uh, the Bayou Regional had uh, catastrophic webcast issues the entire time. Uh, and 364 actually received a lot of votes uh, from outside the area as well, too. So cool to see that there were some people uh, paying attention uh, to 364, uh, this, despite there not being some of the webcast video uh, available. There were clips in that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, uh, Landon, thanks for shooting us that uh, YouTube uh, video so we could show that on air as well, too. So um, so cool to see 364 is getting some good recognition uh, for some awesome performance. Ooh, and 364 bits in the chat. Yeah, thanks, Dirt Bikers. Biddies. <laughs> Biddies. <laughs> great. That's going to stick. Yeah, awesome. great. Awesome. Oh, it's definitely going to stick. <laughs> For sure. Okay, so moving from 19 to 18, and we're going to talk about Team 20. From Clifton Park, New York, and Shenandoah High School, it's the Rocketeers. <laughs> Close enough. Just call, just call it, they just call it Shen. So you can just call it Shen. <laughs> Shen, Shen High School. It's the Rocketeers. They have an overall record of 31-3, and three, and they were the winners of the New York Tech Valley Regional. And this past weekend, they took home the win at the Hudson Valley Regional. So we heard, uh, we first heard of the Team 20 back uh, with their win alongside 2791. And this past weekend just showed again how good they are. Um, taking the number one seed with a 2.9 ranking score average and two unicorn matches during those uh, qualification matches. So the Rocketeers have a strong sandstorm period, and I must say one of the kind of scariest but sketchiest but most <laughs> consistent climbs out there. Uh, if you watch it, it's just like three posts that come down, and then it's just like I think the back post is longer than the first two. Um, so it's like still pushing up and then it just like slams into the hab and it's really, it's, it's awesome. Um, so it's really cool to watch. So, um, I had said a couple of weeks ago, just how 20 kind of approaches first games a little bit differently and uniquely. Um, and we were seeing that kind of with that climb and, um, just how well they're doing here. So, um, two banner season. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't know if you, I don't know if that caught the beginning of it, but, um, so well done the two banner season for them and they have some great experience heading into the Detroit championship. So congrats and to them and, and good luck to them. I think that's the three the three S's of uh, good robot design. It's scary, it's sketchy, but it's solid. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the three S's of there's somebody we should clip that. The three S's of uh, of uh, the FRC Top Twenty Five. <laughs> that's that's funny. Scary, sketchy, it's a, solid. It's a new video segment already, Mike. Coming. <laughs> that's funny. What is that? The three the three S's. Three S's. <laughs> <laughs> I miss seeing 20 so badly. Like they used to come to New England all the time for our regionals, but sad times, uh, district life. Mm -hmm. But we do see them a lot in uh, the off season and like they've come to be templates a few times, which is pretty awesome. So that, that climb is sketchy though, but it is solid. So <laughs> that's what it's all scary. about. It's sketchy, but it's solid. Whatever gets you up on that level three. That's all Whatever it takes. There you go. Yep. <laughs> pretty awesome. All right, so moving on to our 17th ranked team, that's going to be team number 125. Am I doing this one, or Mike, are you going to do it? Oh, I can, I can do, it. do it. I can do it for conflict of interest. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> so from Boston, Massachusetts, and Greater Boston, 4-H Robotics, Boston Latin, Brookline, and Revere High Schools, it's the Neutrons. They have an overall record of 39-19, and 19, um, and they were the winners this past weekend at the Greater Boston District event. So... Uh, Rocky start um, at the Southeast Mass District event and getting knocked out by fellow New England Firsters, 195, at the Central New York Regional in the semis. Go figure with that. <laughs> 175 is starting to hit their stride, scoring up to 13 game pieces per match and hitting the level three climbs. They were selected to be in the number one alliance with 5687 and 1307 this past weekend. Um, and it will go on for the win. So they're currently 10th in New England as they head to the Western New England District and then on to the District Championship. So good luck to them. Christine, what do you have to offer about your team? Yeah, so this past weekend, it seemed like everything came together, so like simultaneously falling apart. Um, we hosted the event and ran the event this past weekend, and it surprisingly went really, really smoothly. So side note, um, all of our key volunteers were first alumni at this event, which I think is why it was so easy to run. Uh, the teams were awesome. And personally, my like most enjoyable event I've ever been a part of. Um, but yeah, we uh, <clears throat> managed to pull out the W this weekend. Our robot broke probably a thousand times in a million different ways. <laughs> but um, the kids were incredibly on top of their game this weekend, resilient. Uh, we were so stoked to play with the 687 again. Uh, we were lucky enough to have them at our district event in 2017. Um, didn't turn out the way we wanted it to that year. They were running into some like, I don't know, Rio issues or something. And then we were with them again at champs and took home the W on Carson. So 
it was a pretty solid weekend. It was nice to see that the like teams are just starting to hit their stride and the game is definitely a bit more enjoyable to watch now during what was it week four because it was kind of slow at first so oh yeah mm-hmm. but yeah we are competing again this coming weekend because why not spend every <laughs> weekend competing um <laughs> yeah. at the what is it like central mass district and there's going to be a, a, a lot of solid teams a lot of teams that have already played too um a lot of teams that we've already competed against so should be pretty cool. good yeah so what, I mean, so what's it like playing so many? Is it, do you guys find, because you guys do this quite a lot or year after year. Yeah. So do you, do you guys find that it's helpful? Do you find that it's kind of, you wish you didn't play as much or? I mean, it's exhausting, but at the same time, not having a um, solid practice field or the budget for a full on second robot, mm-hmm. um, it's totally worth it, especially with games like this, where you really do need the full field to get legitimate practice. Yeah. Um, we have like a partial field that we can set up in our cafeteria now, but it's just not the same. Um, and I don't know. I, I think it's worth it um, for a thousand dollars in district. You get an entire, oh, yeah. another play. It gives our students another chance to, you know, compete and do judging um, for us as a chairman's team. If, if we ever need, you know, that extra shot, it's definitely worth it. Um, Cool. So for those of you who are, you know, weighing the cost benefit, if you're in district, just do it. Yeah. The money goes directly back into your district's pocket rather than yeah. off to head, <laughs> excuse me, headquarters since it's a third play. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Thanks for that. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, we're going to put Christine right back on the hot seat again. Yeah. Uh, 16 spot and talk about team 78. From Newport, Rhode Island and a Quinnedec, which I, don't know if I said that right. I've been trying for years now. <laughs> um, Aquinetic Island Robotics. It's Airstrike with an overall record of 33 and five. They scooped up the Kling Bling uh, with a win oh, yeah. and a district chairman's at the Rhode Island district that they um, host this past weekend. So um, coming into this season, or you know, coming into the season, they were really, really consistent even at their first event, um, scoring cargo and an L3 climb that you know was just really solid at their first event. And they also took home an EI and a Dean's List at their first um, event too, which is crazy. Um, Heading into their home event this past weekend, they once again secured the number one spot and chose their friends 2168, the Aluminum Falcons and 4796 to cruise into the finals and secure a win. They're currently ranked number one in the New England district, heading into their third event with us at the Central Mass District. Um, And then obviously on to district championship. This team... um, They've been around for a while and their mentors are, you know, they've been around for a while too. And this year, I feel like they're really, they're really hitting their stride. I'm interested to see if they can keep the momentum going and kind of keep their, you know, game and their, I don't know, their strategy kind of growing yeah. because I mean, they came out of the gate hot this year, um, more so than I've ever seen them before. Like last year, they were pretty good, but this year they, they were solid with everything that they were doing. The The machine is like really robust um they can take defense really well it just seems like they have like a really experienced group of drivers as well so i'm curious to see how they do this weekend now that everybody's got a few plays under their belt um going into central mass district so yeah yeah and i mean yeah like you said what a start you you win your first event you take home the ei so you get you get cling bling there and then you move on to your next event and you get double gold cling bling there right so that's <laughs> what four three banners four medals <laughs> Just start out with that. Oh, not man. too shabby. <laughs> no, not yeah. at all. Christine, sure. do you know, is 78 like an expansion team or something like that? Because I think on TBA it says their first season was in 2010. Yeah, so they broke off of Team 121, and they oh. um, kind of formed their own team and expanded it into a 4-H program. So it encompassed um, like FLL and FTC, and what it says, Aquidetic Islands, like there's literally little islands around, you know, the main part of Rhode Island that their students are traveling to Newport for, um, for those programs. So True. they were able to really grow the, the, the program beyond FRC, um, which is pretty clear in their EI and chairman's and Dean's list um, showing this year. So they're a really solid program. Um, I think we don't hear a ton about them because they're I, mean, I don't know why, um, actually, now that we're talking about it, but they're they're a really solid group, and I really hope that they continue with their successful season this year and and make more of a reputation for themselves outside of New England. Yeah, cool. Very nice. Well, I think they're on our radar now, so mm-hmm. very cool. Nice. All right, so they... Like 
Oh, sorry. It looks like the, I just want to point out that the ELO and their uh, upper top 25 ranking ELO. Uh, were, agree, were in agreement. Yeah, they, they were the same. So I think they're there might was there one other? I don't remember. There might have been one other one this week. I, I don't recall. So nice. there's some that are close. So I mean, you, you know, Elo is something that is you know it's a new thing for us that we're that we're showing. Uh, Elo's not perfect either, guys. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's just another metric to kind of uh, let you decide uh, on yourselves what you think is uh, uh, the best rankings for you. And you know, not everybody can watch everything, uh, so this hopefully gives you a good taste of what the world of FRC looks like. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.